Do those matching sections on exams have you tangled up in knots? Here are my top tips. Now, first, confirm with the instructions or with your instructor that there is indeed only one match for each item. Usually this is the case, but if it's not, it's really important to know that you might have some double matches, meaning you might have one item on one side that can match to multiple items on the other side. Knowing that is really important. Assuming that there is a one-to-one -one match and you just need to figure out what goes with what, don't start from the top. Look down the list and find a concept or a name that you know and start there. Look down the second column and find its match. You then do this again with the next concept you know. So say there is a list of 10 and you are really confident with five of those. So you're able to match those with ease, get them out of the way, and now you only have five left to work through. And that's much better odds than if you just start with one and try and guess from the beginning. And this is just another example of process of elimination like we used with the multiple choice. So maybe you've been able to match those five relatively easily. And now we have to work through those final five that you're not quite as sure about. First, see if you can eliminate any options for any of the terms. So for example, you have one name and there are five options. You know for sure it's not two of them. It's between the other three. And so make a note of that. Do this for all five and you will greatly increase the odds that you will be able to connect these items correctly. Now, once you've done your best, you may have to finish with some guessing. Maybe you have two or three left that you really just don't know. But even if this is the case, this should still put you at 70 to 80% of the points at worst. And if you guess right at the end, even 100%, that's the great thing about these forced choice items is even if you're guessing, you have a shot at getting all those points if you are strategic. So let's work through this example here. On one side, we have author names. And on the other side, we have books written. And there is a one-to-one -one match here. And so maybe we know, okay, I know Charles Dickens wrote David Copperfield. And I know Jane Austen wrote Pride and Prejudice. And I know William Shakespeare wrote Romeo and Juliet. And I know Laura Ingalls Wilder wrote Little House on the Prairie. But boy, some of these other ones I'm not quite sure of. Um, I think I remember that a woman wrote Jane Eyre. So I'm going to say that that one is between Charlotte Bronte and Louisa May Alcott. And so I'll, I'll make a note of that. And then I'll say, okay, I think that Grapes of Wrath and I'm looking through the options I have left. And I can say, okay, I think that one was either John Steinbeck or Walter Scott. And so I'll, I'll put that in. You can kind of see as we work through this, we're increasing our odds that our guess will be correct. And so by the time we get to the point where we're actually guessing, the chance of getting it wrong is much lower than it would be if we kind of started guessing at a much earlier point in time. Now, a few final things to keep in mind when it comes to these forced choice type items. First, never guess right off the bat. Even if you feel like you don't know anything about this topic, using some of the strategies that we've talked about in this video can make it much more likely that your guess is right and make it much more likely you'll get at least some points toward that exam grade. Next, even if you're not 100% sure of the answer, make sure you have some reason for choosing the final one you chose. So go match with confidence. And if you're looking for strategy on true false items, check out this video right up here. I'll see you over there.